One of the most hyped games coming for Nintendo Switch is Metroid Prime 4. And look, we finally saw Metroid Prime 4 Beyond at the last Nintendo Direct, and things are starting to get really exciting. But of course, what do we do here at Nintendo Prime when the most hyped Nintendo games get out there? We dig and we dig and we dig to bring you every single morsel of news on Nintendo's biggest games. And today is one of those days where we have discovered a major feature for Metroid Prime 4. And oh boy, this is, at least in my opinion, a very, very exciting discovery. So first, we have two different things we're going to be talking about and both kind of back up each other, although one is a grander look at the development of the game. And I just want to remind you right before we get into this that, hey, if you do enjoy these deep dives and these little news nuggets here and there that can lead to some pretty big discoveries at times, I would appreciate if you would drop a like and subscribe to the channel. And you know what? Why not head down in the comments below and tell me what excites you the most about Metroid Prime 4 and maybe even one of your biggest concerns for the game. Now, what are we talking about? Well, we're talking about multiplayer in Metroid Prime 4. Now, look, multiplayer is not new to the Metroid series we've had it obviously with federation force and hunters but technically metroid prime 2 had a multiplayer mode now three corruption did not but hey it actually has existed in the prime series before so it wouldn't be crazy to think there could be multiplayer in metroid prime 4 beyond well we seem to have something that is really lending a lot of credence to that and first we're going to go over here to twitter to this person called thale z oliver uh, sold Nintendo, so you can't tell from a different territory. I'll go ahead and translate this post and says, Analyzing the Nintendo of Europe's websites, especially in Portugal, of the new games announced at Nintendo Direct, I saw there was an update on Metroid Prime 4 Beyond, and it seems that the game will not be compatible with cloud saves. Info provided on the site says, Note, this application is not compatible with the Nintendo Switch Online. Paid membership services save cloud data. He goes, I wonder what they're hiding, yada, 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 for those who want to see it with their own eyes. Now, I've gone over to uh, the own eyes section here. I'm not seeing this anywhere on the website, but then again, I don't understand the Nintendo of Europe's website that well and the Portugal stuff and these translations aren't exactly. I mean, look, in here they're talking about Wii U and 3DS and Nintendo Network, which none of those things matter or exist anymore so i don't know where this is located on the website i don't really understand how to navigate this website and find what i want it's also in a foreign language and i'm relying on google translate so the thing is why would this matter if this is on this website or any other nintendo of europe website well that is because nintendo only has a handful of games that do not support save cloud data now there's actually a, a little bit of a longer list when you include third-party games for our purposes we just care about nintendo published games and when we think about the ones the, the most infamous ones we obviously know are animal crossing pokemon and the splatoon 2 and 3 right those games all feature online and none of them happen to support cloud save data backups. But other games as well, like Damon X Machina has a online co-op mode. That does not support cloud save data backup. 1-2 Switch is obviously a multiplayer game. Does not support cloud data save backup, which I don't know if you really need it for that game. But Tokyo Mirage Sessions is sort of the outlier. It's a completely single-player experience. No online multiplayer. It does not support it. But also, of all the games I just mentioned, it's the only game that's actually a straight port from Wii U. So it could have just been a port thing. It also was year one of Switch before the cloud save backups existed. And for some reason, they just never updated it. Maybe it just didn't sell well enough for them to care. I don't know. But it is an outlier. I want to note the outliers that exist because, hey, this isn't a guarantee that there will be multiplayer in uh, Metroid Prime 4. But there's something to consider when we're talking about this idea of multiplayer being in Metro Prime 4 and why not having cloud save data backups could be an indicator of this. And that's when we go over to this article at Video Game Chronicles. It says an analysis of who's working on Metro Prime 4 Beyond. And this comes by uh, Chris Scullion. And look, there's... 
the bottom line is there's over 121 core developers, probably some, some more than that. They don't have all, you know, everyone. The director of the game is not on the list. Um, but if you go through this article, it says, you know, Nintendo announced back in 2019 it decided to restart development from the beginning, and this is where they ended up going on over to Retro Studios. And it says, although Nintendo Retro Studios have remained tight-lipped on the game's development to date, VGC analysts uh, give some idea of the staff who've been contributing to the game's development. And... The funny thing is, when you go through this list, this this is the giant list they have right here. Uh, there's something you notice that just keeps popping up and really could indicate some multiplayer goodness here. Look at this. So we see some people who worked on, you know, the CEO of, of uh, Retro Studios, obviously worked on Prime 2 and 3. But as you go down here, you know, you're, you're going to see some interesting stuff. Callisto Protocol, Horizon Forbidden West. That's all cool. But that's not what we're actually focused on. If you keep going down, you'll notice things like, oh, Halo 4, Halo 5, Halo Infinite. Interesting. Oh, uh, let's scroll down some more. Oh, Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. Huh, interesting. Oh, Midnight Studios, who is working on a multiplayer game. Huh, quite fascinating. How about some Call of Duty World War II or Modern Warfare Remastered or Black Ops 3 work? I don't know. Might seem pretty relevant to making multiplayer in this game. <laughs> and it just goes on and on like that. You're seeing Titanfall listed in here. Uh, you, you're just going to see over and over and over again, Call of Duty, Black Ops, you know, it, it just keeps going. The more and more you dig through the list, Halo Infinite, the more and more you start to see people experienced with multiplayer games. And I think that, to me, is quite fascinating i mean you get to this engineering section i mean this is important this is the literal tech behind the game right you're seeing people with experience with unity and bethesda and bioware you're seeing you know people down here with the matrix online right this that's the big thing that david plunkett worked on the matrix online you're seeing medal of honor frontline a multiplayer game i i think it's quite obvious at this point that Metro Prime 4 Beyond probably has some multiplayer. Between the cloud save data backup and all of these people, uh, that is just a massive indicator, to me at least, that, yeah, uh, guess what? Metro Prime 4 has a multiplayer mode. How in-depth it is, how big it is, is this the mode that's going to take Metro Prime 4 to the next level? I don't know, because, you see, we've talked about how Metro Prime 4 needs to do something to take Metroid Beyond, as they say, right? It's the name of the game, but what they showed in that initial trailer is amazing, but it's very appealing to the core Metroid Prime fans. And I think that's smart for a first reveal for a game that is, you know, coming out next year, right? We, we just have a general 2025 release date. And what you want to do with that initial trailer is let Metroid Prime fans know, hey, we got you. This is a nice Metroid Prime experience. The core elements are there. We got the scan visor. We got the morph ball. Silux is back. We got the, the corridor exploration exploration and the puzzle solving that's all cool but how you end up hitting critical mass and that is taking this to a new level of popularity is possibly just a multiplayer mode and a very in-depth one if you guys remember like halo used to have really in-depth campaign modes along with the epic multiplayer goodness what if they're going to do that with Metroid Prime 4? And you know what? There's kind of space in this market for it because Halo has been kind of fumbling the ball for that multiplayer space shooting game. So that could be where Metroid Prime 4 kind of sneaks in and finds a new level of popularity, especially if they start pushing it, pushing it as Metroid Prime Beyond uh, significantly more than Metroid Prime 4 beyond right you gotta that, that number four can sometimes uh throw consumers off a little bit i again though I, there's other takeaways from this other than the multiplayer one of that is that the team working on metroid prime 4 is massive uh it's at least 121 developers this does not include music producers this does not include you know anyone that's going to be doing translations of the game uh, the director of the game wasn't on that list so it, it, you, you look at the totality of what's what it's going to take to get this game released worldwide and voice acting and all that you're probably looking at 250 strong working on this game with a core team that's about half of that around 120 to 125 that's been working on it pretty much the entire time and what you need to understand about a, a team that size for Nintendo is that's actually a really large development team. Look, Nintendo's biggest 
individual single development team is the Zelda team. It numbers 300 plus strong, and that combines about 200 or so of the core Zelda team combined with about 100 staff or so coming over from Monolith Soft that now has a dedicated Zelda team as well. So that's really Nintendo's biggest development team, and that's why the Legend of Zelda series, when they make Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, those end up being the most expensive games Nintendo makes because it's literally their largest development uh, team. But Nintendo has other big development teams. They're just saved for very specific things. As an example, the people who made Mario Odyssey, that core development team was, again, about 125 developers, right at the same level as Metroid Prime 4. And that is something you got to consider because obviously Mario's massive, right? We like their its animated movie is the second highest grossing animated film of all time, right? The the Mario theme parks are doing massive numbers, drawing in huge audiences at the Nintendo World, at the various th- parks that we have out in Japan and out in California, and a new one opening up in Universal and Singapore coming up. So we all know that the appeal of Mario is massive. It's one of the largest IPs in the world. And that's the development team used to make its biggest games, you know, games that are widely considered, not just successes critically, but also, Hey, it's a triple a platforming game. And so Nintendo's giving Metroid prime four, the triple a experience. This is a 121, 125 strong core developers, on metroid prime here in the west that means it's not cheap this is an expensive game for nintendo they are not you know treating this like a second class experience they are going all out to do everything they can to make metroid prime 4 the best possible game it could be and this is not even counting the money they probably lost on whoever was making Metro Prime 4 before Retro Studios took over. And again, we have some rumors around that. We're not really sure exactly if those rumors are 100% true. We think they are, and Nintendo's never disputed them. But, you know, uh, we don't want to put shade on other development companies, especially ones that Nintendo does still actively work with. Uh, It just turned out that, hey, who knew? The studio that made the first three games should maybe make the next game. It's kind of like when they took Halo away from you know, Bungie, and then it went to, you know, 343 Studios. Hasn't really been a great transition. You know, some teams are just best for specific projects. Anyways, I'm just excited for Metro Prime 4. I'm excited by this news because... I'd actually be all for a massive multiplayer mode in Metroid Prime 4, especially as long as the campaign is done right and well and feels as good, if not better and bigger than it's ever been, then why the heck would you be against a multiplayer mode? Because that might get talked about more online, because that could create longevity for the game, because it might actually make Metroid Prime 4 beyond evergreen. Also, if it has a big multiplayer mode... That makes me feel very confident that this is a cross-generation game. There's other reasons to think that, of course, but a cross-generation game, AAA budget, if Nintendo puts the big marketing campaign behind it to go with, we could be talking about Metroid Prime 4 doing what I wanted it to do, something I was concerned after the Direct, because the Direct just showed that Metroid Prime 4 is going to appeal to the same people that already play Metroid. How's it going to get that new audience? Well, now, if we're talking about a multiplayer mode, and if they go way bigger, it, it's got to be bigger than what they did with Prime 2. That that multiplayer mode in Prime 2 was massively overlooked because it was really a tiny experience on the side. You know, a side dish that didn't feel uh, as complete as we would expect multiplayer games to be today. So... Uh, look, man, I'm just going to sit back and see what happens. Obviously, I don't think this is something Nintendo would unveil until sometime next year in terms of multiplayer modes, closer to when the game's coming out, really get the hype train going. Uh, but until then, folks, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Rebeljance from Nintendo Prime, and I'll catch you in the next video.